Welcome to the news. My name is Mike B. Today is February 15th, 2019. It is the day after, hold on, what is this, Friday, February 15th, that's right, that, that's exactly what, how did you know I was gonna say that? <laughs> this is Black Sand Gaming from the future. Uh, there's no time. Uh, today, because we can't have a normal week where we're just talking about fun, cool stuff, uh, which I guess we could, but that would be kind of boring, I think. But uh, we do have a couple things to talk about. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Blizzard layoffs. That's a big deal. Uh, not so much the quarterly earnings report because I covered that. I covered the majority of the layoffs as well live when we uh, uh, covered it on uh, Tuesday. So some of that stuff is going to be kind of cut short. So if you feel like I didn't really go very in depth with it, uh, then that means you have not watched the other video that I posted uh, on YouTube. So that means it is your fault. Uh, also, we're going to talk a little bit about how, because uh, all this happened the same day, right? Um, or the same 24-hour period. We're going to talk about Twitch letting go of their, or parting ways with their PR director, Chase, which would not necessarily be that big of a deal, but the internet made it a very big deal. And there was, uh, um, there's a lot of, of things we need to unpack from that. A lot of things actually came out of that where initially it was just reported, and then all of a sudden it became uh, uh, esports versus the uh the media and so that's something we we're going to discuss a little bit uh you guys probably heard what dead mouse did we're gonna talk about that too <laughs> if, if if he just didn't do anything this week we would have a much shorter episode uh we're gonna talk about uh, uh the carlton dance you guys are into that i know nintendo direct got touch on that a little bit because a couple games in there i feel like look pretty cool we'll talk about that uh we're gonna talk uh and also and also 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 we have a Soldier Boy weekly update. All right, so look forward to that. Yo! That's right, Soldier Boy weekly update coming later. Coming later on in the episode. All right, here we go. Ah, what are we getting first? Uh, let's see. We're gonna jump right into the Blizzard layoffs here. Uh, over here on the <laughs> side, over here we have a uh, kind of a master list. This is actually on the Wowhead, uh, wowhead.com. They actually have a master list of everything going over the quarterly, er quarterly earnings reports as well as the layoffs. Now, these things happened at this in the same day. They have the quarterly earnings reports, and they said that they had one of the most successful years thus far. Uh, they also said that they have no, no major releases coming this year, which was kind of an odd statement to make because we know that WoW, WoW Classic is coming. We know that Warcraft 3 Reforged is coming. So it was kind of one of those things where it was like, okay, I guess these are not technically major releases, which you could kind of attribute to that because WoW Classic is going to be attached to the, uh, it's going to be attached to um, uh, the the uh, the sub, the World of Warcraft sub. And uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged, maybe it's just not that big of a deal. So whatever. Um, yeah, weird. So <clears throat> that's, uh, then... And again, we covered a lot of this stuff during the actual uh, uh, quarterly call. Uh, then they uh, ended up laying off 800 people. It's 8% of their staff. So upwards of 800 people, give or take, probably 50 or something like that. Uh, and it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of notable folks. And it was folks from every... It wasn't like it was one department that were let go. Uh, it was a lot of people that were uh, spread, like key people too, that... And a lot of times you're like, wow, this person was like really like integral to like the community and to the game. Uh, and there it is, let go. Be before we get on the World of Warcraft side of it, or I guess, well, before we go down this list here, because this list pretty much highlights a majority of the uh, uh, a majority of the actual tweets. I actually had a one like one page open for every single tweet. So I'm really appreciative that that uh, WoW had went and put all this up together. But uh, <clears throat> Caden, also known as Ethereum, Eth 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 I don't know actually how to pronounce it. Uh, he came in after I had gotten out of uh, this. It, it, it thistens. Um, anyways, people people on the uh, on on Reddit basically said that this person was was a very good CM. Again, I don't have personal experience with him, uh, and they were shocked that that he was let go. Uh, I don't, again, I don't want to go through every single one of them. Just know that it's a lot of, <clears throat> pardon me, a lot of very notable people. It actually even says right here, Ali Ackerman recently had Destiny, formerly handled social media for Blizzard and worked at BlizzCon community events. Uh, let's pick another random one. Bethany Hulse was a community manager for Heroes of the Storm. So we got Heroes of the Storm. We got just Blizzard General. We got eSports. Uh, we got a number of folks that are just basically, this is, yeah, and it stops right there. There's, there's so many more. There's <laughs> so many more people. Uh, Christina, uh, Christina Zarina, uh, she was uh, Hearthstone. So it wasn't, again, it wasn't isolated to just one single 
like a uh, game or or uh, or whatever. It was it was basically. Oh man, it felt like it was just randomly picked. <laughs> like, here's everybody from this uh, from this game. Let's go ahead and pick a couple randos out of there. Uh, I wonder what the what the what the overall um, like how they ended up picking those numbers for some of these folks because uh, there was actually there's a podcast, uh, the Pylon Show that uh, is hosted by uh, In Control, uh, Artosis, and a couple other folks that I'm not familiar with. Um, <clears throat> but they they talk a little bit. They talk a little bit about the. Uh, it's a really great 24 minute video that you can find on Arto Artosis TV on his YouTube channel. Um, and he, uh, you know, they, they, they talk a little bit about the people that were let go and Artosis kind of went a little bit more in depth with one of the gentlemen that was let go. I don't know his, I don't know the name, unfortunately, but the, he said that, you know, this, he was shocked because you got to think like, you know, Artosis, some of these guys, they don't actually work at Blizzard proper. Like they don't work at Blizzard HQ. They like, like Artosis lives in fucking Korea. <laughs> so like, yeah, this is, this is, these are not folks at all like live and work inside of the Blizzard, you know, house. Um, and so they're getting all this news. They're like, what the hell's going on? So, and so they, they feel like they're more familiar with like some of these folks because they're always traveling and they're always traveling with these people that are doing all these great things. This is one gentleman that he, they talked about and he goes into detail and says like, this person was at every single uh, tournament. He knew every single player. He did all, he's a genius. Like he did all this creative marketing and helped all, all these things. And, and this is like Artosis words. He says, if, if that, if he got let go, then that tells me that somebody up top has no idea what is going on on this side of, 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 of the fence, right down here, I guess. Um, and then he also goes on to say, if, if it scares me because if that person's cause, cause he said, he said, cause my life is pretty much like my entire income is based around Starcraft casting. And so if somebody who would be the absolute last person you would think with 15 years in the last person you would think would be let go. If somebody like that would be just, just released, then what's to say that their job is safe. And so that's, it's scary. It's scary. When you got these kind of, when you have these kinds of layoffs, like that is really fucking scary. And it's true. It's like, if somebody, if somebody like our, our, just think about all the casters that, you know, just on the Starcraft side, right. Or, or just on any side, uh, you, if they just went through and started like letting some of these public faces, you know, go the same way that they let go of, uh, of the, uh, CMs for wow. And for, um, and for Hearthstone and all that, then that would just be like, just further damning and showing that they really have no fucking idea, uh, what's. No, they, 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 sorry, they're not really expressing what their plan is. You can't really say, excuse me, you can't really say that Blizzard has no idea what they're doing because they do. They're just not going to tell us what that is. We'll figure it out eventually. And I'm sure some of us have some guesses as to what they're doing. Uh, but, and some of those guesses would be pretty, I think one of the obvious ones is, oh yeah, they're shifting to mobile, right? That sure is fuck what it feels like <laughs> that they're, they're, they're going to go ahead and uh, uh, shift gears to try to uh, get people uh, get folks that are more mobile oriented. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris uh, says uh, they get rid of people that cost them a lot of uh, in years pay benefits. That's that, that's something that happens too. People people over time they get they accumulate more raises, more raises, and they get paid more and all that stuff as they move up. And then eventually it's like, okay, well, you make one hundred and sixty thousand dollars as a community manager. Uh, we could hire somebody at forty thousand dollars to do the same job. You're great and everything, but you're just too damn expensive. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> And they just let him go. Uh, is this why I read it's angry at JL and Brack? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although I'm not, it's, it's hard to really tell like where do you want to direct the the ire towards. It's really difficult to the uh, to really tell exactly where that should go. Just know that it's probably somebody somebody high up, right? In the like Bobby J Allen like range up there. Like that's pretty much where it is. Uh, one of the people I've I've, I've seen some of the uh, uh, folks write things like, oh, that's capitalism at its best, uh, or get get over it, it's capitalism. <laughs> it's not quite so simple uh sure yeah it's it's they are in the business of making money but are they willing to do that at the cost of their integrity and that's that's the thing it's it's if if they show that they are that out of touch and again you say yes we say yes now right we say yes now because over the past six months we've really seen that kind of mentality where they're willing to sacrifice integrity um, for, 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 for profits. Uh, we've really only seen so like real major cases of that over the last six months. And, and you could see, you could say it probably started or really picked up steam uh, at uh, Diablo Immortal. That was a huge one. Uh, and then now at the layoffs, like laying off key people on staff, uh, you could say, you could say it's when Chris Metzen left. You could say it's when Mike Morheim left. 
You could say it's when uh, it's when Mark Kern left. <laughs> you could say a lot of this. You could say it was when Activision took over. But really, I feel like it, like the vast majority of folks really, really haven't gotten wind or really kind of realized that, wow, they really are like just in it to win it. Fuck everything else. Um, when Greg Street left, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Activist has already shown they're willing to make money in the short term at the expense of long term as they are, uh, as they have squandered all of their big IPs away. Yeah. And Bobby Kotick has a habit, has a history of that as well. He used to run EA. So this is, um, this is, this is not something that's that much of a stretch. Uh, I think it was a record profit year, acting like it was a bad year with the layoffs is uh, smarmy as hell. Yes, it, so they did say that it was a record year. Um, they did lay off 8% of their staff. They said they're going to reinvest 20% back into their uh, um, into into certain areas. Uh, that Those two numbers don't correlate. That popped up a couple times where they basically said, oh, well, they're, they're deleting, they're getting rid of 8%, but they're adding 20%. It's like, no, no the, 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 the denominators are not the same. <laughs> so those two numbers don't really correlate. Uh, but... Uh, it still, it still shows that, you know, it still feels as if they are looking, they're either looking at the future and saying, we don't need these people going forward because we're going to be downsizing these, these, this is what it feels like to me. Over the next like two or three years, I feel like we're going to start seeing a massive downsize in certain things. Um, like Overwatch League. This is probably going to be the last season of Overwatch League. I feel like the money being put into Overwatch League right now is basically like this. Oh, okay, they're they're going to try to uh, reinvigorate it one last time. But I'm I'm willing to bet this is the last season of Overwatch League. Uh, I I fear for WCS um, for um, for StarCraft because with StarCraft Two, StarCraft One is a immortal basically, <laughs> but StarCraft Two um, not not particularly popular. So and that's it's 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 something that you know we're gonna see a uh, probably a trimming down of their esports presence uh, outside of maybe like one or two major things, right? Um, not to mention also, uh, Overwatch League opened yesterday. I saw a screenshot, and they didn't, they couldn't even beat. Which I, I get, it's, it's it's a big number to top, but uh, Overwatch League opening could not beat uh, Apex numbers and views on Twitch. So. That you could take that however you want. Apex is a, is that mean Apex is just that big of a game, or does that mean the Overwatch League is not that big of a deal, or is it both? To be fair, Bobby Kotick was right about Tim Schafer, though. Uh, I I didn't I don't remember on, on what, but I mean, but I, but I mean, yeah. To be fair, like Bobby Kotick has you know he's he's in a position he's he's in a Kotick. Uh, he's he's in a position he is because he's made decisions that have you know benefited businesses and sometimes those business those business decision uh decisions have trickled down and benefited us other times they have not um i wonder if it's, uh what their if their blizzcon will be well what the what the blizzcon will be like this year yeah to be fair to be fair i saw that video now i'm gonna hear it every time i every time I, that comes out of my mouth uh something else that happened kind of in the midst of all that that you, we knew that there were layoffs uh, happening um one of the one of the more profitable ventures, profitable ventures that word did not come out at all. One of the more profitable ventures is actually uh, everything in the Kings uh, uh, area, right? Where you have uh, um, you Candy Crush and all these other uh, mastery games and everything that they put out. Uh, but in the midst of all these layoffs, they actually straight up uh, got rid of uh, Kings San Francisco Studio. That was a big deal. Like they have they have an actual. Uh, like, like a full studio closure that they did uh, amidst all this stuff. So yeah, it's they're they're making a lot of changes. And again, like King, if you look at the numbers, three hundred twenty-five monthly active users and all the money they're making off that, uh, that's a pretty big that's a pretty big uh, deal. They they run uh, Candy Crush, and amongst other games. Oh, so stocks. Oh, stocks. I mentioned on Discord the rumors of the layoffs, the prices tank. They announced them, and they're going to go. Uh, they're going to be buying a bunch of their stock back for the public, inflating value of the stock to their investors and offsetting the damage that was done by the news itself. In fact, tank their stock price, buy it, buy it back for cheap. Yeah. So they did mention they're going to be doing, they're going to be, uh, they have a $1.4 billion, uh, buyback program for their first stocks or something. But the, um, so, so, but it's hard to really draw a line to what that means, right? On one hand, it's like, okay, they're just trying to save their stock price. And on the other hand, people are saying, oh, are they trying to consolidate all their stocks for some reason? Like, what's that mean for the future of, of Activision Blizzard? Who knows? Uh, they just saved $200 billion leaving SF. That's not, that's not, that's not that far from the truth, man. Yeah, the, the, the fact that they, they packed up and left, uh, I, I wonder if it was. 
you know, the, um, because of that. Uh, Teddy would say, Mike didn't go to your, what, to, to BlizzCon? Yeah, I had a very, uh, would this be the first BlizzCon Mike won't go to? No, I, I didn't go to you. I had a very, very, uh, I had a very, very good reason why I did not go two years ago that some of you guys are aware of, but I won't discuss here. Um, so, uh, so yeah, no, I, I, I will still, I still plan on going to BlizzCon just, just personally. Uh, I still plan on going to BlizzCon because I still, I still love the people that go. Uh, I love that environment, just hanging out, talking, I'm meeting, meeting new people every time. Um, it's just, it's just a great environment. It sucks that, you know, potentially Blizz, BlizzCon could be, you know, uh, uh, getting worse, I guess, you know, with the announcements or just like what's there. So eventually it might get down to the point where I just don't buy a ticket. I don't buy a ticket and I just go to just, uh, to just be there, right? Just take up a seat. But here's what's funny though. I wonder if over time, if it just gets progressively worse and worse, if more and more people will do that, where they're going to start not buying a ticket to BlizzCon, but going for the, for the community to the point to where people that are actually go to BlizzCon are not actually going to be able to afford or find a place to actually stay uh, while they're there. Because that's a very viable option. People go to BlizzCon every year, just like I do. Uh, and they might be like, you know what? $200, that's, that, I could save 200 bucks time. I mean, if they go with like a family member or something like that, or their, their SO, or like that's 400 bucks. They could save 400 bucks, easy. Go to fucking Disneyland. Well, you could go to Disneyland for, yeah, you go to Disneyland, yeah. Yeah, oh my God. Well, you get one day. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I just did the math on that. So one ticket to Disneyland is $144. Uh, and one ticket to BlizzCon is 200 bucks. But BlizzCon is two days. So you could argue that however you want. <laughs> but, but there's no fucking rides at BlizzCon. All right, so it's not the same. Um, I have friends who consider going, but to hang out, not for the con. Yeah, see, so it's it's possible it's going to happen. Uh, Brian says I still ca I still crave a wild pet battle mobile app. No, don't, what do you mean fight you? That's awesome. We want that too. <laughs> that's the that's the one that's the one World of Warcraft themed uh, mobile mobile game that, that I feel like I would actually play. Um, but who knows what they're going to do? We know that they have Warcraft. They have plans for Warcraft on mobile. We just don't know what. Uh, yeah, let's see, uh, 144, yeah, $144 for Disneyland ticket. I know this because we just bought some. We, well, we, well, we've been buying them over time. Like, you know, Jen's been like buying one ticket, like every other paycheck. That's what we've been doing. That's how we got the tickets to go, uh, this time. All right, moving on, moving on. I'm not talking about me going to Disneyland. All right, so next up, next up, we have a, uh, this is an interesting one. And it's, it's a little bit of, uh, it's, it's definitely some Twitter bullshit. But it kind of it, it kind of does kind of lead into a little bit of discuss, discussion about uh, esports and journalism. Um, so Slasher, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with, he's an esports journalist. Just kind of a, actually, he's kind of a gaming journalist in general. Um, so he basically put he put out a tweet and it said, "Twitch has let go of longtime PR director Chase. It will be utilizing 47 communications, according to sources. Twitch Chase has been at Twitch since the beginning and has been instrumental to the company's success in media. Another OG out, another loss for Twitch." And he says, on my count, the original of the original 20 Twitch employees that the site launched with from Justin TV, only five people remain. The heart and soul of Twitch is essentially gone while Amazon overlords look on. This is very sensationalist, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I agree to this to an extent, but like, write it like that. It's like <laughs> the heart and soul is gone. It's like, hold on a second. I actually responded to this, actually. What did I write? Was it this one? One of my comments in here somewhere. Nah, probably not. Oh, there it is. I said, I agree with part of this, but there are some really great folks that weren't quite part of the original crew that still work there and have those core values, the bleed purple at heart. Eventually attrition will win, but until then, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not willing to completely lose hope in Twitch. So yes, clickbait wording, right? Gotta get them clicked, gotta get them clicks. And so he, he wrote all this and uh, he got, he got a little bit of flack for it, right? Let me go back here a little bit because I actually have this thing bookmarked here. Let's see. So. Hassan tunes in or, or chimes in and he says, just trying to understand why you continue to make statements before a person themselves had a chance to process such things because it's true. Chase actually has not at, at, at this point in time had not had the opportunity to actually announce that he was leaving yet. Uh, probably not even told any of his peers that he was leaving yet. And yet it's all over Twitter. Uh, and so he's basically saying, you know, 
do you like the retweets? Do you like the likes? Is it whatever? And he says, hi, Asan. I don't believe we've met or spoken. Not sure if you know this, but I don't work for Twitch and I don't write things for relevancy. Don't disrespect. Don't disrespect me. That was an interesting word use there. Don't disrespect me. Uh, are you sending the same message to journalists who are reporting on impending layoffs at Blizzard? No. And he says, I guess you don't get it. Talking about one employee versus layoffs as a whole seems different to me. If you were let go or left the job and I don't I don't think you'd want someone else announcing it for you. You did the same thing with my other co-workers, with former co-workers. It's not cool. And he says, your company laid off more than a dozen people in what was told to me as a pretty brutal way. But me reporting on it is not cool. Hmm. Uh, good to see you're as vocal about companies being laying off, uh, lay, laying off workers as those reporting on it. You don't get to dictate what is said. Um, and so, he said, oh, you did Google this later. So, so we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this because personally... Personally, and this is brought up somewhere else later, reporting on a single individual leaving Twitch is feels feels a lot like you're trying to you're, you're you're looking for an angle to attack Twitch for you know for whatever reason, right? Uh, and so when you look at like okay, so think about this: when I was laid off of Zam, right? Because I was I was laid off of Zam along with like a ton of other people. That didn't make news. Like almost the entirety, actually all of, of Zam management was gone. Half the dev team, more than half the devs, gone. Not one article that I saw. I mean, or may, maybe it was one on like, you know, maybe, uh, I don't even know where it would be, but I, I didn't come across anything anywhere that was like, nobody reached out to me and said, hey, Mike, do you have comment on, on, on you guys leaving Zam? No, no, because no one gives a fuck about Zam, right? But then you look at Twitch and it's like, and, and think about how much Zam has done. Okay. Wowhead, Lol King. These are, I thought by it. These are major sites that support major games. All right. So it's not like we weren't like small, small, but we weren't like Twitch big. Now, when a single person gets laid off of, uh, off of Zam, or I'm sorry, off of, uh, of Twitch, suddenly it's, it's being, it's, it's, it's being announced like this. And so this to me is kind of like, it's kind of a gray area. But we're going to talk a little bit more on this soon. We're going to get, we're getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, to be fair, no one cared about Zam, just Wowhead in the face of Wowhead didn't go anywhere. That's true. Yeah, they kept Perk. Uh, and that was, yeah, <laughs> they, they did. They kept Perk and then they kicked everybody else out. <sighs> the premier place for bogging your computer down with ads. But we're going to leave this open for a little while, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, no, never mind. Whoop. Okay. Um, let's see. So this further kind of escalates a little bit um actually further down here let me see we had some discussion between uh i wonder if actually if it's on here as you can see there's a bazillion comments but in control got involved that that that's discussion back and forth with uh, justin wong um and justin wong pointed out and this part's pretty important he pointed out that that slasher has you know done some things that that he he felt was uh, was unethical uh but and I can't find it now, of course. Man, where is it? Oh my gosh. Let's see, uh, da, 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 da. I have links to every. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So Justin Wong chimes in. He says, "Reporting of the layoffs is necessary. Companies don't get to expect silence. The difference is you chose to specifically name people before they could decide how they wanted to announce their departure. You didn't even bother to ask for confirmation or give a courtesy heads up." And Justin, Justin knows about this because he was a victim of this with Slasher in the past. When Justin was let go, it was announced before he had opportunity to say anything. Do we know how Slasher found out? We don't. We're going to talk about that soon. Um, and so Justin points out, Justin has a screenshot, and this makes Slasher look like a huge asshole. But we'll talk more in a minute. So he sends a text to or sends a DM and he says, hey, don't put my name in. It's not cool. People aren't unemployed yet and outing them actively hurts their chances of finding new roles. And he says, I made a I made a correction on Tosspot. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, as as for your name, you are a public figure, Justin. Woo, man, that's fucked up. So. This makes this makes Slash look like a huge asshole. There's no there's no, no way around that. He's just doing his job. Yeah. Kind of also doing it like an asshole, too. Um, so now this whole thing breaks out and there's like, there's tons of comments. I mean, it's just shitloads of comments. This thread goes on for days where they're basically just talking about uh, the ethics of this ethics and journalism. Uh, 
Here's Chase responding to, to Slasher saying, Hey Slasher, while I appreciate the praise, I wish you had reached out to me first. The note I emailed to many of my press contacts was that I was moving on from Twitch with contact info uh, for 47 communications, a cool agency we have been supporting since uh, September, or we've been working with since September of last year. And then he later goes on and actually posts his own. He has his own uh, message that he posts basically saying that he is indeed uh, he's, uh, he's, I saw the news that I was leaving Twitch, made it to Twitter before I did. Yes, it's true. It's been a thrilling eight years at a great place to work with an awesome community to serve. Thanks for all the positive tweets. I plan to stick around the gaming scene. So catch up soon. So there's, all of this stuff happened. And then his article comes out from PC Gamer. And I thought it was, I thought it was a good one. I thought it was a good one because it doesn't just chime in. It doesn't just discuss the, okay. Uh, thank you for not forcing me to do whatever that was. A little pop-up window. It doesn't just talk about this instance it talks about the follow-up instance that happened on a podcast now i don't have the podcast here where i could clip it and actually show you guys what you know what what was said specifically uh but inside or say inside uh on this inside the game podcast with weeds uh Andrew the muslim and in control uh they actually had some they had slasher come on as a guest they had uh, a couple other folks come on as guests and they discussed the ethics of um uh <laughs> that's exactly what it was black sand gaming uh the ethics of what what he was doing Right. Being able to basically put out the uh, uh, putting out these things, uh, saying these things. And this is the first time that Slasher has become under fire for uh, for doing things that uh, some organizations would 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 deem uh, unethical, um, which, you know, when you talk about like ethics with journalism, uh, there's there's it's very easy to say that's a very unethical thing to do when really all it is is like that's an asshole thing to do. Right. It's ethical. Right. Because of the way that press works. If they get information, they're obligated to then put that information out to, and if it's information that was, oh, sorry, if it was information that was acquired legally, then they're obligated to put it out to, uh, uh, to, to their readers. That's part of their job. That's what the press does. Uh, it, 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 that is the ethical way of, of doing it. Do they do it in an asshole way? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, it's like, Slasher looks like an asshole. <laughs> like, what he's doing is ethical. Absolutely. That's, that's the freedom of press. That's the freedom of press. But in the in our industry, there is apparently uh, a disconnect at what what constitutes uh, 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 ethical, unethical, and just being a plain asshole. And so that's so this article basically goes through and kind of discusses like you know this is something that esports in general with a capital S uh, they need to uh, uh, basically get a grasp of because you know sure in esports a lot of what a lot of a lot of the money earned is through sponsorships, through hypes, through announcements and everything. And if that stuff is leaked and announced by somebody like Slasher or somebody else or MMO Champion, it happens to MMO Champion all the time. They always get the inside news, always put it out, right? If they end up, uh, if they get the scoop first, then you lose some of that, that hype. But do you go after, do you go after the, the press for doing this? Or do you go after the people that are leaking it? And so that's the thing. It's like, you could get mad at the press for doing their job. <laughs> but really what you should do is be upset at like where that, uh, uh, you know, where that information came from. Uh, freedom of press does not equal ethical. Right. Well, we could talk about this kind of stuff all day, but what I'm saying is in this case that there is, there's ethical, unethical, and then being an asshole. Uh, and in this case, I do feel like slasher is in the right ethically. You know, he's just, he looks like an asshole doing it, but so fucking what? Like that's, that's the way it works. That's the way press works. Don't let your shit leak. It's super easy. Uh, give a heads up about a big story. It's still common courtesy among the press. Yes. Usually they reach out. It's a common courtesy, but they don't have to. That's the thing. They don't necessarily have to. So, uh, this is just, this is just, again, this is just looking at the way that, uh, uh, the way that. We, I guess, we're not just here, but I guess just in general, like press in general, the way we structured press to function. Uh, I'm going to go back to what I said before. Is how does some random guy not in Twitch get information about Twitch that being fired? That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's, it's, don't, don't, don't hate the player. <laughs> hate the game. Like it really is. Somebody, somebody leaked the shit out. And this happens all the time. Somebody wants to be the one to help to, 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 uh, to, to be the first one to like, oh yeah, man, I got this inside scoop or whatever. Uh, and they leak information or somebody lets something slip on a stream or whatever. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, and when you get yourself into a position where you're constantly, uh, the first one to provide news, you're going to be receiving a lot of news. 
Um, Slash has been around for a long time and has lots of birdies. Yeah, yeah there you go. Man, is, is Slash your little finger? Is Slash your little finger? Oh my gosh. I feel like, man, that is a great way of putting it. Slasher is little finger. Man. Okay. That really shapes that whole thing, doesn't it? <laughs> so, so this became, obviously, that, that was a, um, that was a, a topic of discussion there that I felt was a pretty good one because you're discussing, you know, ethics and journalism uh, versus, you know, leaks. And really, uh, the, actually, the quote in, in, the, in this editorial on PC Gamer uh, was pretty good. Uh, let me actually find it. See water. Let's see if I can find it here. Let's see. Oh, floor. He says, you don't get mad at your floor for being wet because your faucet broke. I was like, that's perfect. That's it right there. Uh, from Chase's tweet, it sounds like Slasher was on the list of press. He sent the email about his departure to. Oh, probably. Probably, yeah. But but we don't know if that was if that was how uh uh that was how he initially got it because I believe he got he broke the story first. So yeah, I think that he has he got inside info there. Um Oh, you're right. It's Varus. Ah, oh, shit. Sorry. No, wait. No, wait. No, but doesn't. Oh, yeah, you're right. The little birds. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I do feel like little finger does fit the uh, uh, slash a little better. But no, you're right. Varus is a pretty good match, too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Varus is a uh, because little finger does have his connections and everything, as we see throughout the series. But Varus is the one that discusses his little birds. A oh, little bird told me he's like, well, there's little things in his garbage. He's like, oh, little, little bird, whatever. Um, can't wait for the last season of that. Don't you dare spoil Reno. Oh, yeah, no, don't worry. We're not going to spoil anything. Just go watch it if you're going to watch it because you're definitely going to get spoiled uh, when, the next, when the next season starts. Last season. Salad fingers. Lol. All right. Uh, the next one for the next story. Next up. This is an interesting one. You guys know what Dead Mouse is? Dead Mouse 5, as some folks have called him in the past. Uh, so Dead Mouse, he said some shit to the, uh, this week. He said some dumb shit. Like some really dumb stuff. Uh, so we're going to go to TMZ for this story because funny enough, TMZ actually has like the best coverage of this straight to the point. Ah, the Dead Mouth 5. Yeah, so Dead Mouth goes nuclear after Twitch ban over homophobic language. Um, so... He got, do I have everything else for the whole I make sure I got it. This is a lot of stuff. So, so he said some shit on a stream because he was being stream sniped. Heated gamer moment, as we've come to call them, right? Uh, whose face was that? <laughs> you don't recognize him without his hat, <laughs> without his mask. Uh, he, so he, he said something, he said some things on Twitter, uh, or sorry, on stream, and he got banned. Uh, he got a 30 day suspension. And then he went to Reddit. I'm going to read what he wrote there in just a minute. Uh, and the TLDR is that he said he was not going to do anything with Twitch going forward. Uh, and he was pissed. And we're going to read some of this, right? I want to point out that one of the biggest things that people are, uh, are, are arguing is that he only used the F word. Now, for the purpose of this, for the purpose of this broadcast, I will be abbreviating words as F word as N-word, and so forth. I don't believe you guys need any kind of explanations of what those are. I'm not talking about fuck. I'm not talking about fudge, or fam, or freaking anything else. Okay? <sighs> so, <laughs> he has an F-word in his hand. Yeah, exactly. So people are saying, well, hold on a second. He only said the F-word? That is, that's, that's, we use that word for whatever, right? Like that's, that's, that's not something that it's not used that way anymore. Um, and so the debate came up and it basically spread. And for some reason it was like, oh man, there was just so many people across so many different sites on Twitter and everything trying to defend him for using this word. Now I understand that words evolve, right? I understand that words evolve. Um, I think we all understand that words evolved uh, or evolve over time. But the context of which he said it was not acceptable and a very clear violation of the, of the terms uh, of, the, of, uh, uh, of Twitch's terms of service. Uh, and so let me see. They have a quote in here somewhere. Da -da -da -da. Here we go. Uh, so he said, fucking cocksucking stream sniper F word. All right. So when you bundle all these things together, suddenly it's not just, oh, he just said the F word. It's that he, he did a double whammy here. Now, 
Uh, Fraggle? Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, none of those things. So he went to Twitch. I'm sorry, he went to uh, Reddit. Uh, he was obviously very heated. He was very heated. And he wrote the following. I'll try to summarize some of this stuff, but I'm probably just going to read a mm, chunk of it. He says, sorry about that, guys. I knew it was a fun place to connect the fuck around, but I'm not going to stand for Twitch's double standard when it comes to censoring and suspending me for harmless shit. Well, we've had some fun partnerships here and there, and they were a great company to work with. I'm going to have to cut this one short. I don't have the capacity to deal for this with this kind of shit. Uh, and then he says, whatever, dude, the internet is basically full of shit for the most part, da 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 and he says, uh, he's, he says, uh, while it was intended to insult a fucking asshat who was being a fucking asshat, it wasn't directed at an entire group of people who have a sexual orientation that differs from my own. Fuck off with that shit, I know who I am, and I don't have to sit here and fuck and cry and defend my fucking self with the obligatory, I'm not obligatory, I'm not that person, I am sorry, Reflex, if I'm sorry for anything, I'm sorry that we live in a world where bottom feeding pieces of shit can sit there staring at a monitor, watch me play video games, and just waiting for someone to get tilted so that he can get a few fucking clicks. That's what I'm sorry for. I agree 100% with what he said right there. It's just too fucking bad. It does not support the context of what he said and what he got in trouble for. So I understand what he's saying. It's true, right? Even if I mean, anybody could get, you know, anybody that streams could have something just, you know, just pulled out and just all of a sudden it's like, wow, this guy is a terrible person. And so it's true. People just hang on. They're wait. They're waiting for you to fuck up. They want. They want. They want to be the one to to to, to take you down. Watch some of the bigger streamers. Watch. Watch someone like Ice Poseidon. Right. Like. I mean, if you can handle it. And watch someone like Ice Poseidon. You'll see. Like this. There are people trying to trying to fuck with them all the time. You know, all these bigger streamers is like that. Especially the IRL streamers, of course. But somebody like like Dead Mouse. You know, he's he's a celebrity. Uh, I, I mean, I get it if you actually did nothing, but he was way out of bounds. He's actually uh, uh, acting all entitled to being immune to punishment. Yeah, it's true. Uh, this is why Mike has lights behind us. You can't clip. Yeah, they're not moving now. I gave up on that. I figured if, if, some, if someone's going to try to take something I say out of context, I, I'll probably survive it, really. I probably will. I don't know. I don't really have the, I don't really have the capacity to deal with that kind of shit. <laughs> uh, so, so this next part is kind of weird, I think. And I get it. I'm reading this stuff off of a second screen over here. I hope you guys don't mind because I don't want to necessarily put my discussions with my, with my friend uh, over. But I was like, you know what? As with things that happen when it, that pertain to race or religion, if it's not my race or religion, I don't really feel like I have much of an authority to speak on what the current status is of whatever that thing is, 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 under, uh, is under scrutiny. This is a problem that a lot of people have where they don't know how to draw that line. They don't know how to say, well, hold on a second. Maybe, maybe Native Americans don't give a fuck if you call them Indians. I don't know if that's true, right? But instead of maybe let's ask, let's ask some Native Americans and see what they say. No, they take it upon themselves to say, no, this needs to be corrected. And they move on with that. Now, I, again, this is just an example. I don't know if that's the truth, but it's, this is something that we see happen very often. Thank you, by the way, Precision. Um, I call you Precision? That's weird. Uh, it's, it's so, so I decided, I decided, you know what? I, I'm not, I'm not gay. I'm, I'm not part of the gay community. I'm not active member of the gay community. Why don't I ask somebody that I trust who is a part of the gay community in San Francisco? His name is Jason. He is the head of the SF leather pride contingent. He does rallies. He goes to, uh, they have get togethers. They do all this stuff. He, for the long, for as long as I have known Jay, he has been a very active member in the gay community. And so I was like, you know what? I know he doesn't follow any of this shit. I'm going to throw this at him and see what he says. And I'm going to read you what he wrote. Uh, so I wrote, I basically wrote, the situation happened yesterday on Twitch, a video game streaming platform. Cause I, I need to explain this though, because I know he doesn't watch this stuff, right? Uh, where the guy streaming was being stalked by in-game person, right? So I got to explain the whole thing kind of layman's terms, right? Just kind of explain some of these things, right? Uh, and he says, and he says, what up, Mike? Good to hear from you. Interesting topic. My, my thoughts are, it was meant as an insult regardless of the situation. You can't really say it was meant as an attack on gay people because there's two jabs at them in there. <sighs> Excuse me. Cocksucking and the F word. 
To say it is worse than saying the N-word is ridiculous because I gave an example where somebody was saying, it's like, oh, it's worse than the N-word, right? Um, which we know is not true. Uh, <laughs> he says, it should be looked at as equally offensive if we are comparing the N-word to the F-word. Both are marginalized groups who have been killed or attacked for no other reason than just being themselves. He didn't just say the F-word, though. It was a cock-sucking F. So there's a little more to it. People don't just blurt out statements like that using the N-word, or at least not from what I've heard. And let's be fair, yes, we've heard that before, but it's not as frequent as somebody dropping an F-bomb at the end of a sentence. You don't really see that, right? Uh, as often. Uh, da -da 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 -da. He says, I do hear the F-word a lot, though, especially in online situations. Racism definitely still exists, but it's not something someone openly declares, but homophobia is something that people still feel acceptable in public settings, and that's not okay. I feel like that's a really important thing right there. I'll read it again. Make sure you guys are listening. <laughs> he says, racism still exists, but it's not something someone openly declares, but homophobia... Oh, lost it. Uh... But homophobia is something people still feel is acceptable in public settings, and that's not okay. This is one tiny example of what happens all the time, and the only change, the only way to change that behavior is to punish those people who are saying those things. Whatever the, whatever the situation was that caused him to say that is not cool. You can say it was meant, you can't say that it was meant as a compliment. Now, again, Jay is a really good friend. He's a family friend now, right? He was there when Jen and I met, right? I've known him for years. I've been to a lot of his, uh, a lot of his um, uh, uh, parties and all of his get-togethers and everything. Uh, and so I know, I know that he is very in touch with, with that. And also this answer, I was just like, I was like, oh my God, Jay, this is the best answer I could have possibly got. It was so good. Um, and it's true. It's like racism. No one's going to sit there and be like, oh yeah, I'm a racist. Psh. Sure, whatever, right? Don't take this fucking shit out of context, you fucks. Uh, but there are people who will, be, who will openly admit that they that they don't like gay folks, right? They and and they're okay with that. And so that's that's the problem right there. Is that uh, is is that is that you? Have, please don't clip it, guys. I'm serious. Uh, we're trying to have an actual conversation. Uh, is is that these things are looked at differently when in reality, like there have been situations that people have been, uh, you know. You're beaten or killed or treated unfairly because of their just they're just being who they are. Um, I mean, I remember being in like middle high school and everything I didn't like was Travis gay. It's true. Yeah, I used I used to say it too. I told you guys in the past. Like I, I used to say it all the time. Everything was gay. I don't understand why I said that, but it was just something that I just said. Uh, I think people will openly admit to being racist. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's let's not let's not try to be pedantic, <laughs> Teddy. Uh, Yes, you can find instances of this stuff, but in the greater majority of things, you're not going to find people that are going to openly admit uh, things, um, uh, admit, to being a homo admit to being a racist versus being uh, uh, homophobic. You'll find way more people that will basically say that, um, uh, you know, they're, they, they're homophobic versus there's, they're the racist. Yes, of course, racist, racism is rampant everywhere. Of fucking course. I'm not trying to play down racism, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's not be silly here. Jesus Christ. And so, anyways, I uh, fucking snapped my fingers at you guys. <laughs> so, uh, we we went on to talk, to talk a little bit more. And here's the thing. He had no idea who I was talking about, right? He didn't know that this was Dead Mouse. Uh, I knew, I knew that he, I knew that he knew who Dead Mouse was. Uh, and, but I didn't want to tell him uh, what would happen. And so, so eventually I, t I told him. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, I mentioned, I told, oh, you know, you know, it, by the way, he said that uh, we already have an F word, so maybe we should stop saying fuck is a bad word and free up the F word. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a good point. It's a good point. Um, and so, uh, so I told him, and this is just kind of a side note, that was kind of funny. So I just Googled it. Uh, I didn't hear about it until you brought it up. No shit, it was Dead Mouse. That's even worse, honestly. Being a public persona, he should have known better than that. What an idiot. And yeah, he's right. <laughs> Being someone in the public and being 38 years old, you should fucking know better than to say stupid shit. But for some reason he did. And and we know that, you know, he's he's built he's he's he has built a little bit of a persona that he doesn't give a fuck, right? Um and he actually touches on that a little bit in uh, uh in the in the apology he put out. He didn't put an apology. But before all this stuff happened, uh he says, I'm reading that now. He clearly doesn't have a publicist. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. That's what we all said. Um and so Before he actually put out his apology, 
there was like this army kind of gathering around him. Um, and when you look at, when you look at the kind of people that were like backing him up, I'm not sure if that's the kind of folks he wanted to associate him with himself with, because we know, we know how polarizing this stuff can be, right? It's always the SJWs and the thought police or the word police or whatever versus whatever. And it's just like, there's always this, like this clash and you have to, you have to fucking be on one side or the other. There is no fucking gray area. Right. And so when he had said these things on Reddit, he got a lot of traction with folks that maybe he didn't necessarily want to associate with. Um, and that's what happens. You know, you say something, you, you say something, you know, auto mod rip, uh, you say something against a controversial group, you're going to get members of the uh, op opposing faction uh, to back you. Do you want to associate yourself with that? Do you want everybody to be like, oh, hey, look, that person is a Nazi because you know that's what would have fucking happened if he had kept going down this path. Eventually, Dead Mouse would have become one <laughs> somehow, some fucking how. <sighs> and so he does come out later and he does does put out a uh, uh, an apology. I have the actual Reddit post here. I did not see that coming. Jokes. Uh, <laughs> so using a word as an insult as a connotation of being persuasion is a negative thing. A lot of people don't won't use that word in context, but being uh, but it being defended and excused by those people inadvertently provides cover and defend uh, defend for those who do do use it uh, the most hateful way. Uh, Hank Green does a, vi uh, a great video on cultural divisions when arguments arise uh, on the internet from the Gamergate issues. Uh, I, I did say, there is one last thing that I said to him. I said, because he's not been in touch with the gamer, the gamer community, my, my buddy Jay, right? Uh, I said, the gaming community has been in such turmoil these past few years. Gaming became hip and accessible, and suddenly all these cultures begin to collide. You have these Midwesterners and the New Yorkers, and then the 28-year-old startup employee and SF all trying to coexist and speak the same language, and it's a fucking madhouse. That's what I wrote to him. And it's true. It's fucking true. Yes, just like PewDiePie Gar. Um, it's 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 true. It's like we this is this is our this is our growing pains. Eventually we'll get over it. But yeah, I'm sorry, it's super bright. It's it's I'm in incognito mode. I don't know. Um But yeah, it's just it's just one of those things that, you know, eventually you know, we we create our own little micro communities. Like we have our own micro community right here in Discord. Um and then, and then, and, and, and some people, you know, there's, there's like-minded communities out there. We'll kind of link up at everything, like between myself and Shizzle and, and Josh. Like, I'm sure we all have very like-minded communities. Uh, and can I actually go live mode from here? Hold on a second. I, I, I just didn't think about that. Yes, yeah, sure can. Sorry, I didn't set that up ahead of time. Is it going to work? <laughs> Hold on. Night mode? Well, I tried. <laughs> just deal with it, all right? Just turn the brightness down. It's bright for me, too, though. Look at that. Look at like, what is that? Like this? No, they're all, they're all bright. Shut up. Um, anyways, so, uh, uh, so we did put out uh, an apology and he says, uh, uh, I need, I needed to cool down for a few and seriously reflect on all this. I know that what I said was wrong and my hastily composed non-apology was insult to injury. I realize that trying to somewhat dismiss it as a gamer culture, as gamer culture was even worse. I don't know who, why I did that, but I do know. I do know that it was stupid and insensitive, and I feel even more ashamed. That was my worst moment. And so he goes on to talk a little bit more, and he says he's going to go back uh, to focus on cubes and music. Um, and and you know what? Like, and, and, and for some reason, this apology is not good enough for some folks. I, I accept this apology. Sure. I mean, I wasn't one of the people that was necessarily being offended by it, right? Uh, but I did, I did recognize it as being something that... Uh, um, I didn't recognize it as, as, as being something that he definitely should have been disciplined for. <laughs> and so, yo, he wrote an apology. Fine. You want, do you want to say, oh, it was written by someone else? Okay, well, fucking fine. He put it out. <laughs> it's like, what else do you want? It's like, <laughs> this is not good enough. Uh, and so he came out, he apologized. And, uh, and I mean, you know, the debate, the, the debate between the, you know, the words, <laughs> the word police and the words uh, seems to have kind of subsided for now. But, you know, it's entirely possible that, uh, that this happens again. It happens very often. Heated, heated gamer moments, moments happen all the time. Uh, I'm sure this is going to happen again. Uh, for those of us that grew up in the internet in 90s, early 2000s, it was a very different place. I think there's a sizable group of people around this age that said in the past, without, coming, without it coming from a place of hate, and can understand how it's about today. It's a little crazy to me how much it's blew up. It is. It, it, is, it is crazy. Um, but at the same time, it is something that needs to be, uh, uh, like, I mean, it, it, it needs to be 
resolved. You know, it really it really needs to be resolved. Uh, I wouldn't mind hearing an opinion from somebody in the LGBT community in Toronto because you do hear the F word there. So, so okay, so I did ask another friend, actually. Sorry, I, I want to include this, too. Uh, I did ask, uh, I have another friend that lives in San Francisco. Um, now, he's not he's not as active in the uh, in, in the gay community in terms of, like, organizing rallies and all that shit, right? Uh, and I, I don't mean, like, rallies that protest. Like, it's more like fun stuff. They basically dress up in a bunch of leather and go out with whips and just fucking just be naked in the streets, okay? It's And drink. <laughs> uh, it's 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 he this this gentleman is my buddy danny um he he's just basically regular old working gay dude in the city that's it like he just he could be he could be a dude in any city he just happens to live in san francisco um and he said uh I, when i when i send the whole thing uh he says it doesn't bother me personally i just think it makes him look ignorant and i can see why twitch would react so severely by the way he also didn't know who it was um and so, uh, he says, and so then he follows up and he says, it would have, it would have been bad PR if they didn't suspend him at least. And he says, uh, people are overly sensitive in my opinion, but every generation gets a little softer and you just can't get away with casual hate speech anymore. And he's right. He's right. I mean, we're discussing it right now. Those of us who are in our thirties, late thirties, when we were, uh, uh, or actually just thirties in general, when we were, uh, teenagers in the nineties, uh, early two thousands. We did call everything gay. I don't know why. It was just something we did. And we dropped the F word all over the place and all that. Now, the N word, that's something a little different. That's not something that me or my friends ever did. Uh, but it would, but, but apparently that was rampant in some communities. But still, uh, he's right. It's like the, you, you just can't get away with casual hate speech anymore. And calling somebody a cock sucking F word is kind of a, it's kind of a double whammy. You're not just saying that they're an F word. <laughs> You're saying you're you're kind of doubling down on it. Uh, Senior Chang made it cool though. <laughs> yes, but he said K, which is not like that's that's yeah, it's a little different. But yeah, um, let's see. Uh, when you get past twenty five or so, it becomes more and more difficult to work on your vocabulary. People don't want to change. Uh, what if providers uh, just had an uh, internet etiquette etiquette test before providing internet to people? Oh man, that's <laughs> okay. We're getting into a little. A little, it's a little controlling, I think. Um, uh, as he admitted, he made it far worse for himself by posting when he was angry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I missed the first part of that conversation there, but yes. Yeah, it's true. I mean, like, he did admit, uh, Cal, would you right here to see? There's a part of me that just wants to say, who cares if they use it? Don't give the word its power. But at the same time, I know a lot of people just can't do that because of their past experiences with it. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's the thing. Uh, it's, it's all over now. <laughs> it's all over now. But still, like, it's going to happen again. It's absolutely going to happen again. Um, uh, with Calamus, words have power if you let them have it. Yeah, it, it, here's the thing, though. Uh, you know how, okay, you know how white people get real mad when people say white people do blank? It's kind of the same thing. Why has it got to be white people? Why has it got to be all men? Not all men, right? You've seen this happen, right? Just don't give it power. It's the same fucking thing, right? Except in one case, you could attribute it to actual violent acts that have occurred, right? Sure, you could say that you got beat up because you were white when you were younger. I did. <laughs> I sure as fuck did. Uh, it's, 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 but it's still, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's the same thing when you're, when you're, when you're, uh, Using the word with a negative connotation or not, as my, as my friend says, uh, you didn't mean it as a compliment. So really, there's no excuse for it. Um, yeah, there's always going to be someone that perceives a word as having power. Yeah, true. So, uh, I mean, what's wrong with just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get too deep into this because I know that, th I know that this is a divisive uh, subject for, for some of you folks, right? I get it. Um, but, you know, this is, this is again, again, this is why I went to somebody who is active in the gay community, in the gay capital of the fucking world. That's why I went to him, because I, I felt like, you know, I have a good understanding of this, but I, could appre I would appreciate a little bit more information. And so that's why I went to him. And so, because I don't feel like I'm at liberty to decide whether or not that is a word that we're able to use because of the history of violence against that marginalized group. And it happens, and it happens everywhere. As long as people feel envy and greed, this will never stop. I mean, of course it won't. I mean, of course, of course, we 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 could be pessimistic about it and just say, you know what? Never, nothing's ever going to change. It's never going to change. Or 
or we could try to squash it. We could try to squash it as it happens, the little bits here and there. Now, did Dead Mouse does, did he deserve a 30-day ban? I don't think so. Like, let's go back to that real quick before we move on, because I don't want you guys to think that I feel like he deserved a 30-day ban. 30 days is really fucking extreme. If I had a 30-day ban for a word that I said, right, I would be pretty upset. Now, I guess it would decide it would kind of depend on the word. Uh, but no, seriously, like that is that is like like just life destroying for some folks, right? Twitch is not my primary form of income. So if I got banned for 30 days, I would survive. I would be hurting, but I would survive. But there are folks who rely 100%, 100% on their Twitch income to survive. They're living paycheck to paycheck because they're trying hard to make it in this, uh, in this, you know, in, in this field. And if they, if they got hit with a 30 day suspension on a first time ban, now I don't know if he's been banned in the, in the past, right? For this. But if, 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 I got, if I got banned for 30 days for one time infraction, uh, that would be something that I would have to look at and just say, you know what, maybe Twitch is not the place that I need to be because that's too much risk with being involved with, uh, uh, with a platform that you know, could just destroy your life like that. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty sure Dead yeah, it's, I know it's not, I know it's not Dead Mouse's primary form of income. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm using it as an example. <laughs> that's why I say there are people out there who depend on it. Uh, just don't ban my sweet Anita. <laughs> Dude, she's, she is immune. She is like 100% immune to all of this stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy what she's, she's, she could potentially get away with. Um, there's someone that showed her, wait, what? Showed her boobs twice and got either 24 hour ban. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could compare this to like, you know, the, uh, what was her name? She said there's two genders, right? Uh, and then she got 30 day ban. You could say, oh yeah, she got a ban for just saying there's two genders. Uh, from what I understand, she has a history, but nobody wants to look at that, right? Um, you can look at, uh, uh, there was a couple of streamers back in the day that would just sit there with their legs open and their boobs hanging out. And it was just like, what was it like squats for subs or something like that? But they never did squats. I was really upset by that. Uh, <laughs> And you could you could compare all this to all these instances of all these things happening, but um, but but yeah, I mean, like, and also, I also I, I'm more than happy to go on record and say that I don't feel like Twitch uh, enforces their policies evenly across the board, and I feel like that's a perception issue because they're not able to disclose how many infractions someone received in the past and all that. Uh, that's uh, yeah, I'm giving an example of something that I saw in the past. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't actually go out and, and seek out you know titty streamers anymore. Um, that was, that was a phase I went through. It was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's definitely an issue with the consistency, the perception of the consistency of which they issue bans. But a lot of it is based on the fact that they can't necessarily disclose the full details of some of the bans. All they could say is, yeah, we banned this person. And that's it. They can't say we banned this person because they did this, but also they did this a week ago and also three weeks before that they did this. And each time they got in trouble and they just don't fucking learn. Like they can't say that. They can't fucking say that. So it's, it's a problem that they, they really need to work on. I don't know how they're going to resolve it, but as long as people, uh, uh, <laughs> as, as long, as long as this shit keeps coming up and they keep on, you know, and they, and, and they're not able to tell us what's going on, the, the actual stigma that they don't, uh, enforce their, um, why can't they? That should be an obvious answer. Libel. Um, is it libel or is it, uh, uh, which one is it? Is it? But yeah, anyways, it's, it's, an, is it's an issue with, with uh, uh, they can't basically come out and just actively say that somebody is a bad person. Uh, libel is printed. So yeah, it would be libel. So uh, if they, had, they, had, they would write it out technically. So yeah, it's, it's an issue. It, there, there is an issue there. It's a lot more, it's a legal issue that they don't want to get involved with. So they'd rather just say, you know what? We just banned you because we felt like it. But really, we know that it's because you did all this shit in the past. So, and you guys know it happens. Like when some of these people get banned and people like start like getting behind that person, it's like, well, hold on a second. This person's a piece of shit and has a history of being a piece of shit. <laughs> Do you really think that because of this one thing that they did, that that's the reason why they got permanently banned? Like, come on, man. You got, you got, you got to be better than that. Inconsistent enforcement of policies always come back to haunt you. If rules or words apply them consistently, yes, yes. And it, and and again, you know, they, they it does feel like they're very inconsistent at times. Uh, it also feels like they make really dumb mistakes. Remember that guy that was like beating his wife and he got like 30 day ban and he came back? <laughs> Like that to me sounds like a slip up. Like somebody fucked that up somehow. I don't feel like they necessarily did it on purpose. Um, woo! All right. 
I think we're we're out. We're, let's let's get let's get out of this space. Let's get out of this space. Oh, all right. So let's let's shift gears to <laughs> this guy. Weird. There's a little like, segue here, but uh, uh, you guys know what the Carlton is right. The Carlton dance. We'll get to Nintendo news in just a minute. Uh, so some time ago, um, Alfonso Ribeiro who is now the host of America's Funniest Home Videos. He was the winner of Dancing with the Stars and also known as Carlton on uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the preppy uh, uh, son to, uh, uh, to Uncle, Uncle Phil. Um, he, he had a dance on that show called, they called it the Carlton. Uh, he, has, he has admitted since then that, yo, it was something that he had saw and he kind of repurposed for the purpose of the show and it was hilarious and everybody loved it. Um, he actually filed a suit, or somebody representing him filed a suit against Epic because of their usage of the Carlton dance in one of their emotes. Now, that is, that is, um, th this is an interesting story because he said Courtney Cox's dance. Is that what the, was that the, the original? I don't know. Um, so this is an interesting, sto interesting story because one, can you really copyright a two step dance? Uh, and two, is Epic really allowed to just pull from the pop culture, you know, catalog, something that was popularized by somebody and then make millions of dollars off of it? We know this has happened in the past. Let's not talk about World of Warcraft and all the other games in the past that have copied all these things, all these pop culture dan d d uh, dances and whatnot. Let's not talk about all that. Um, because the story here is that an actual lawsuit was filed. Wow, it doesn't sell dances. It's true. Yeah, but somebody will bring it up. Um, so he filed a lawsuit and, uh, and he lost. They, the copyright office refused registration of, oh, sorry, uh, registration for that. But he, there is a lawsuit for this and for the floss dance, actually. Uh, but the copyright office refuses the registration of the actual, uh, of the dance, which means the lawsuit has absolutely, like you said, no chance, Saren, has absolutely no chance. It's not going to happen. Um, you say choreography is protected under the 1976 Copyright Act, but this has a range of stipulations. Yes, yes. A choreography is going to have to have a certain number of, of moves or something to it. Um, but in this case, unfortunately, it's not, enough, not enough to be uh, copyrighted. And so I'm actually kind of curious what you guys think. Uh, are you guys okay with, like, let's say if, I, if, if somebody you know came up with a dance, right? Uh, maybe we could use uh, Dr. Dre, not the Dr. Dre, but Dr. Dre from, uh, uh, from Yo MTV, MTV Raps. And actually, I'll pull up a video real quick so you see what I'm talking about. Uh, um, Dr. Dre dance. So he has a very iconic dance. Uh, oh, shit. Is it Dre? Was it Dre? Was it Dre? No, Dr. Dre was his buddy on that show. Shit, shit. What was the actual fucking dance? Oh, man. The spur of the moment shit throwing me off. I should look this up beforehand. Um, oh. Let me clear my throat dance. Let me clear my throat. There you go. DJ Cool. Go dance. And we'll go GIF. Let's see if I can find it. Nope, can't find it. All right, cool. Glad we went down that path. We're going to go ahead and just ignore that. Free that it happened. Um, so, yeah, I know about the Backpack Kids thing, but that's not going to happen either. Uh, it's like the Macarena. Yeah, well, the, Mac the Macarena is, is, is a number of moves. Right. But like, I wanted to use that example and I, can't, I wish I could remember his name because I fucking love this guy, but I can't remember. But he has this move where he basically, where he basically is just kind of like, da, 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 da. he's kind of like this. That's it. That's all he does. He just kind of does this. Uh, and that's it. It's, it's a two step move. It's super easy. Right. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, if they use that in, in something do, and made millions of dollars off selling the skin, do you think that that's fair? It says it depends, depends on how iconic the dance is to the person claiming, the, uh, claiming copyright, e.g. We don't connect the floss to the person we invented it anymore. It's gotten far too into the public domain. That's, that's true. But, but do you also, but do you associate the Carlton dance with Carlton? Like that's, that's the problem, right? Like that's, Epic is making millions of dollars selling this, this emote or this dance from that somebody else popularized. 
Did he create it? No, but did it, does anybody hold the rights to it? Like, there's a lot of things that people own the rights to that they didn't necessarily create. <laughs> so this is a, this is gonna be a, this is a deep hole here. Thank you, the Ed Lover dance. Fuck. Thank you so much, man. All right, let me see if I can find that gift now, man. I love you so much, Ed Lover dance. Oh man. I'm gonna pull this up. Look at that MTV raps. There Not it is. That's Ed Lover. Look at that. I would buy this dance. That's all it is. It's really hard to see because it's like VHS quality, but. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so uh, that's a dance I haven't seen anywhere. So I'm gonna hit two FPS videos. That's a, that's, a, that's a dance I've not seen used anywhere. So it's but it's something that is popularized. I feel like by him. Um, how about that Snoop Snoop Dogg dance? Yeah, right. The little shuffle, right? Uh huh. Finally, a dance I can do. I know that's probably one of the reasons why I like that dance. Actually, um, Vod is muted. Oh no, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> was that to mute that one part out <laughs> it's like really it was really shitty quality there's no way um the shepherd shuffle yeah so that's so that's what i'm getting at it's like is is this something that and this is something that we're not gonna be able to decide this is something that the courts got to decide i mean if you, if you can actually register a dance which maybe that's the future maybe people when they when they create a dance and it gets popular they're gonna jump in and uh and actually try to copyright this it's only an issue because of money absolutely it is 100 percent issue because of money when somebody, when somebody has, uh, is making so much money off of somebody else's, uh, uh, creation, then surely, uh, they're entitled to a piece of that, right? I mean, wouldn't they be? They made it. Uh, so he's getting some publicity from this. He has to know he can't win this. Oh, well, yeah, he's getting, I don't think, so I, I don't think that, that Alfonso necessarily needs a publicity from this. I, I think he genuinely feels that Epic is making millions of dollars off something that he popularized. Uh, and I say this because he's the host of of America's Funniest Home Videos, which is a very popular show still somehow uh, in its 30th season <laughs> or 20, whatever. In like some, I don't know, maybe 30 seasons. I don't know. Um, but he, he, he is uh, he's in a position where he has notoriety now again, somehow. Uh, he's so bad as, as a host. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Jen and I were talking about, I, I love him. I think he's great. He's a very genuine guy, but he's not the best host. He's a little too, uh, uh, Jen said it game, game showy, a little too game showy. Um, popular issue. Did he create it though? No, but that's what I'm saying. Not everything that somebody creates, they own the rights to somebody else can own the rights to something that somebody else created. This happens all the time. This is part of the problem with the, that we have with the copyright, with, with, with our copyrights system uh, i don't want to live in a world where every single pop culture quirk uh gesture etc is copywritten it's gonna happen it's gonna happen when 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 everybody catches wind of how much money that epic not just epic yeah, epic is just the start but all these but, but just basically games in general are making off of something off of these things that other people have created they're going to find a way to get a piece of that it's going to happen it's, it's look at itunes <laughs> when itunes first launched iTunes found a way to make a shitload of money, uh, illegally, of course, right? And then what happened? Everybody else decided to make something similar, right? You got Google Play, you got Amazon, you got Tidal, you got all these, even, even Napster tried to, try to flip and try to make it work. And it's just something that's not going to happen. And so it's, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's a system that, it's, it's the way it works is somebody sees that somebody else is making money off something that, you know, they can potentially, I, I'm sure naps would probably try to sue them, <laughs> but I'm probably not actually. Um, is this uh, epic dance being advertised as the Carlton dance? Uh, what is it called? What, does, do one of you guys actually play Fortnite? I'm curious actually if, uh, oh, it's called fresh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It just is fresh, so you mean you, you don't want to copyright onto that? So no, we play good games, my dude. <laughs> uh, like oh, so. um, what is fork knife? So in the future, the cameras in every corner of the world will charge a, a cent for everyone that does a copyright dance until no one dances in public. Remember, um, what is it? Is it Judge uh, um, Judge Dread? No, not Judge Dread. Uh, Demolition Man when uh, Sylvester Stallone. He's in the future and he realizes he can't curse. Every time he curses, he gets fined. Right? 
we don't live in that in, we don't live in that world yet. But I do have somebody that's listening to me all the time right here that will uh uh that you know potentially that I might be able to turn into a system that could uh uh could actually penalize me. <laughs> this shit's coming, man. Just wait. Just wait. You'll see. We'll get there. Uh, you, you, you'll, you'll get, you get a call. It's like, hey, so one of our systems uh, picked up that you were talking about uh, uh, doing blank and blank and something, something that's a matter of national matter of national security. So we're gonna have to, um, you know, we're gonna need to uh, step inside and discuss this uh, privately if you don't mind. So, dude, it's, t it's totally gonna happen. One thousand percent. Maybe not. Maybe not in my uh, in my lifetime, but definitely in Declan's. For those uh, uh, in the wait. For those in the board game, no, this is issue. This issue is a gray area as well. There are a ton of stretch goals for certain miniatures on games uh, by Simon uh, that look like famous movie characters but are named differently. Yeah, wow. Uh, the best scene from uh, Demolition Man is when he goes up to the machine and curses at it a lot to get tickets for toilet paper because it is no one. How the fuck do you use? They never explain how to use the seashells. Nobody <laughs> knows how to use the seashells. Um, even to this day, I don't think it was ever explained. Anyways, so. This is something that, uh, <laughs> this guy doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, meta bitches. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, am I the only one that doesn't know? <laughs> All right, so moving on from this, we got some happy news. This is a long episode, isn't it? Is it a long episode? Yeah, it's a long episode. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? We have a long episode every once in a while. Uh, but that's something I feel like I feel like we should discuss in the future. It's gonna happen, right? Like you know, we have to figure out how to draw the line between when something that somebody popular something that somebody popularizes versus something. Don't talk to me right now. with your auto running ads, GameSpot, um, versus uh, um, you know being able to copyright some of these things like a move or like a phrase or whatever. Like, what do we allow? Do we allow people to get away with making money off? these things or do we further abuse the copyright system going forward it's tough <laughs> mr boy news right there that'd be a great seg segue into mr boy for sure uh we'll be curious we doesn't uh we don't exactly mean the words we talk i think plenty of it uh will be well, uh, will be resolved if we all start using a word that is meant to express used to express frustration Whoa, what aims we talk about um anyways yeah that was that was a great nintendo switch uh uh thing yes we are going to talk a little bit about the Nintendo Direct announcements, just a little bit, because some of these things actually look pretty cool. So this is an article, this article by GameSpot, you can find them all over the place in terms of like ones that will go through and kind of show you a little bit of everything that they covered. Uh, I just want to show a couple things that maybe, maybe some of you guys have missed. Maybe. Um, let's see. So first off, first off, this is a pretty big deal. I'm sure you guys heard of this one. Uh, this is the, uh, well, we'll just watch it. 99 players, but only one reigns supreme. This is Tetris 99. The iconic puzzle game arrives with an online experience like no other. Nintendo Switch Online members can battle for dominance in this free to download game. If you're attacked with garbage, attack back to defeat the other 98 players and become the sole survivor. Nintendo Switch Online members Oh, okay, oh, okay. Bowling ball versus trampoline is the next video. That's how I have to go incognito, guys. Uh, yes, there is indeed a Tetris-themed battle royale where you have a uh, you have a system that allows you to basically Tetris attack other players. Okay, that's enough. Oh, oh, gosh. Okay, that's Zach Scott Games. I'll keep the link down below in the description for those of you guys watching the VOD. You guys go watch this gameplay footage if you want. You actually had no idea how to play the game at first. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit, but uh, basically what you can do is you can you can essentially target. You can target players and send them lines. This is actually very similar. It's actually exactly like how you would play two-player Tetris back in the day, where you would say, where you would basically say you'd make a Tetris, right? And then you would send like a couple lines over to an opponent. So this is the same thing, but on the scale of a hundred people. And so that's all it is. <laughs> it is an actual Tetris battle royale where you can control where you want to attack, uh, and then you could send them lines just like you could in uh, in regular Tetris. You can see right there, there's some lines coming. Uh, there it's gone. Um, and then you play, you have a placement you go to. Now, I don't know how long the matches last, but it seems they last for about five, 10 minutes or something like that. I think it looks sick. It's also free. 
but it's but the online component requires the um uh the Nintendo online service. So that's like three dollars a month or something. So you can download the game and I believe play it by yourself. Uh, but uh, if you want to play online with, with matchmaking, you're gonna have to go and uh, and do it uh, through uh, the Nintendo online service. Uh, can you buy can you buy skins? Yeah, can I get a dance with my uh with my Tetris blocks, please? Um. It was a great, yeah, it was. It was, I mean, a free-to-play game that just requires that. It's fucking awesome. Uh, Z, Brian, I beat you to it. It. I actually haven't tried it myself, which is a shame because I have a Switch, but I've been fucking busy, right? Um, next up, this was a good one. This is actually, I'm really excited about this because I have, I have Mario Maker on, uh, so look how red it is. <laughs> um, I have Mario Maker on the uh, DS and on the Wii U. Uh, thank you, Tanneros. I had that on the Wii U, and uh, but now it's gonna be on the Switch, which is great. Which is great. Let's watch the trailer for this real quick. You know what? I should talk over this because it's all audio. So what they're demonstrating here is that they actually have added a um, there's a whole bunch of components with how you build maps that they've added. So the initial Mario uh, Mario Maker actually had some limitations to what you could do. Like you could create you could create a pretty challenging platformer. You use physics of like things bouncing off of other stuff, things swinging, all that good stuff, right? Um, but now, and this is and this is just like a sample right here. Now this next segment, video segment, you can really see what kind of crazy shit that you can add with like pathing, with lot not logic necessarily, but like this. Uh, we can actually have like full on moving platforms. Like they're really getting you to the points to where you can uh, look at this as a, uh, like think of it like trials. <laughs> like before it was like, oh yeah, you can make up, you know, some platformer shit. Yeah, sure, no problem. But now it's like getting so customizable. You can really look at this like trials where it's like, yeah, you could create games within games. Uh, with like the way that they can, you could work out some of this, you know, programming aspect of some of these things. Are we getting Mario Maker Tets? I had thought about that with the first Mario Maker, but I didn't have a Wii U at the time. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Hold on a second. Was that Boom Boom and Who? Hold on. I'll go back a little bit. So Bowser. Okay, okay, yeah, it was just Boom Boom. Okay, never mind. I thought I, th I thought it was one of the uh, the uh, Koopa Kids, but you don't have the Koopa Kids in uh, the original Mario Maker. I was like, oh shit, that's huge. Yeah, Iggy and all those guys in there. Um, <sighs> anyways, yeah. So, uh, you see, see trials, but you have to check your uh, check your try. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, there's no there's no catch ramps or anything like that. Actually, they're pretty sick though. You can probably get some pretty fast matches with the slopes and everything. Um, is it okay? But Mike, is there Bowsette? No, they they have they have actually come out directly said they have Nintendo directly said that they're not going to have a um. Uh, a Bowsette, so never buying. Rip. Rip. Next, this is just a short preview of this. This is actually a demo that's available later this month, I believe. This is Yoshi's uh, uh, Crafted World. I just want to squeeze in some wholesome shit, all right, guys? We're trying some wholesome shit today. It's been fucking crazy. All right, look how wholesome this is. All right, appreciate this shit. We don't get to talk about happy stuff very often. Look how happy everything looks. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, is it the Yoshi games are like some of the most like incredibly designed titles, man? Like, look at like Yoshi's Yoshi's Craft the World, Yoshi's Yarn, Yarn Yarn World or whatever. Like, it's incredible the kind of stuff that they're actually able to pull out that look, it looks so good. It looks so good. Lastly, uh, the last thing is uh uh Link's Awakening trailer. I won't play the first part because the first part's basically kind of like a small anime. But I'll play the last part here so you can actually see the gameplay. If you missed this, Link's Awakening was uh, uh, that was a Game Boy game. Uh, I didn't play it, but essentially it's, it was the Game Boy equivalent of uh, Link to the Past. So if you play Link to the Past, then this should all look very familiar to you. This looks incredible. This really, like, graphically, this looks amazing. <laughs> like, this looks so good. Uh, what do you say? Yoshi is female? Hold on a second. Is that true? Because Birdo is supposed to be the female... Equivalent, ah, hmm, I don't think so. Uh, anyway, so this is, uh, uh, this looks awesome. I am 100% gonna get this thing in 2019. <laughs> That's all you get. So yeah, it's, it's, there's some pretty, pretty cool stuff coming. There's Assassin's Creed 3 remastered, I believe, coming as well. There's also a Dragon Warrior, or uh, Dragon Warrior, that's, sorry, really old franchise, uh, Drag, uh, Dragon's Quest, 
uh, 11, I believe, is coming as well. Fire Emblem, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Builders, that's right, Builders too. Um, there's a lot of stuff that they announced that's coming this year. A lot of it's, you know, remasters or remakes, but that's kind of what we've been, you know, that's kind of what's been happening with, uh, with the Switch. Because you know why? People look at literally everything that comes out and says, man, that would be great on Switch. Birdo is a female. Um, and if it's not a female, then all the figurines I have of Birdo, because I do, I have a chess, I have a chess board that, uh, uh, that has, uh, um, you know, Birdo and all the representative Birdo, all, all the, uh, uh, drawings of Birdo all have the bow and the, the lips. So you could say, yeah, you could say that it's, that maybe he just, maybe Birdo just likes wearing lipstick or something, bow ties or, um, uh, bows in the hair. Sure. So okay, we're we gonna argue this now. No, <laughs> the the last trailer I'll play for you. By the way, the, uh, these other trailers are uh, all available. I have a link down below in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. That will have all of the uh, uh, trailers in one video. It's crazy. Oh, let's see. Yeah, let's argue this. Birdo is this. Birdo is that. Birdo is this. No one gives a fuck. It's the video game now. All right. Next up, this is an important one, guys. This is not Nintendo Direct related, but... <laughs> yes, Hohan, hype! This is a sequel. They're calling it a sequel to Hollow Knight. It's a, it was supposed to be a DLC, but they've actually fleshed it out to make a complete game. Uh, and I understand that. At some point, you, it's no longer a DLC, right? What? Hold on. I don't, I don't even want to try to like translate what the hell you're saying, dude. There we go. Problem solved. Sorry, quick ban. We're good. Um, this looks awesome. I love Hollow Knight. I wasn't a fan of some of the DLCs. It felt a little grindy. But this is one of the characters that appears in the first uh, Hollow Knight game. She's one of the major characters that appears in the uh, Hollow Knight game. What do we call it? Like Needle Girl or something like that, right? Uh, but yes, they have a full release sequel coming. Starring... Uh, what is her actual name? Is this Sil Silk Song is the name of the game, but I don't know if that's necessarily like what the thing is. Um, anyways, you guys watch the rest of that later. It's like 20 seconds left. Hornet! Thank you. I was like, what is her fucking name? Yes, Hornet. But the name of the game is called Hollow Knight Silk Song. Technically a sequel, they say. Uh, yes, I am quick with the band. When I'm doing news and someone comes in and says something like I just can't translate, but it doesn't really feel like they're necessarily trying to be uh, uh, part of the, you know, just kind of like. Kind of going with the flow of what we're talking about. They just kind of want to go against the grain to be edgy or whatever the fuck he said. Uh, yeah, I will just ban you. No problem. I have no problem with that. Uh, let's see. Lastly. Lastly. The last thing we have today. It's just Soldier Boy Weekly News oh, Update. That's right. Yeah. Soldier Boy Weekly Update. You. Yeah, baby. You. I'm very happy that I did that. My first, that's my, that's my first soundboard thing ever. Yo! All right. So, <laughs> so I got a, I got a DM from, uh, uh, uh Googie Amara, G-U-G-I-A-M-A-R-A, -A -A, uh, on Twitter. Yo! And he said, uh, he actually went through and found, I don't know if he did it himself or he, if he, uh, found it on a website or something like that, but he actually went through and, uh, sent me a link to all of the or to a sizable chunk of the uh, uh, the Soldier Boy products, you can see them right here, on Alibaba, being sold in bulk. Now, uh, now when I was younger, I don't know if you guys ever, like, saw these things, but I, I used to get these, um, or we used to get these, uh, like, brochures, or catalogs. And it was, uh, it was essentially, like, it was a Chinese company that would basically mass produce these, like, really cheap toys, and then you could... And yeah, then you can order like, oh yeah, you can order like 20 of these things. 
And so when you when you went to like a, a swap meet or something like that, uh, what else do they call it? Flea market, I think. Um, when you went to like a swap meet or flea market, you always had like these setups where like, oh, they they have like twenty seven, they have like you know twenty packs of these uh, or like a, a little display of like these little pullback motorcycles or something like that. You could vroom 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 and just let it go. Uh, and they had like ten or ten of them in like a box or something because they they mass buy them or like the the uh, uh, the retractable like kind of lightsaber sword thing. You kind of go and it kind of extends out. It's like a rainbow color. Right? Like you buy those things in bulk. And so when I was a kid, we used to get these brochures and I was like, oh man, this would be great. Unfortunately, I had to buy like 20 of them at a time. And so that is what, uh, what this uh, gentleman who uh, DM'd me on Twitter, what he uh, sent me was basically all these items that are available on Alibaba purchased in bulk. The first one I have is the portable USB thing. Uh, this is being sold on his uh, page for $19.99. And you can see it right here being sold for two to nine. So basically five to nine pieces is two dollars eighty eight cents. So you bought more than one hundred two dollars thirty two cents. This is not like unusual, right? This is business. This is the way it works, right? You buy something in bulk, you turn around, and resell it, try to make a profit. I just think it's fascinating how much these things cost per unit. Just crazy right here. These are the earbuds three to seven uh, uh, $3 for seven pieces or three to seven. Yeah. Yeah. $3 for seven pieces. Um, and he's selling them for 20 bucks on, on this site. I don't know if there's a print somewhere that says soldier boy or something, uh, <laughs> on it maybe, <laughs> but still it's, it's, it's the, the biggest one though. The biggest one, well, actually those two, there's two actually I actually want to point out here, uh, is this headset that's one dollar so it's one to, i guess it's probably one to four dollars uh it's just one piece to four piece okay so four pieces so minimum order um basically costs nothing it really does cost nothing uh and it's being sold on site for 29.99 that's great how does it how is it so cheap like i knew it was cheap but how is it so cheap <laughs> that's just wild to me here's the uh soldier tablet 129.99 sold on soldieralectronics.com $25 here. Where is it at here? $129.99. And then over here. It's wild. It's 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 wild that it's I I I understand that there's cheap. Like we know that it's cheap. <laughs> like there are things we can get for cheap. But that is cheap. That is like what the fuck cheap? Crazy. Crappy cheap plastic people slaving in Chinese factories. Yeah. Chance I'll start to explode. Yeah. Why do you think it's any different from any other website out there? This can be said for all the products. Yeah, I just explained that part. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy just how cheap it can possibly be. Again, I understand the business side of it. You buy shit in bulk and you sell it for a profit. Cool. That's what you do, right? It happens all the time. I just wasn't aware of how cheap it was. And I thought that that uh, was something that you guys would find, you know, you guys would find interesting. Just how fucking cheap this shit is. You guys want to go in and buy like a whole bunch of like, we'll buy like in bulk, we'll buy a whole bunch of headsets or something like that. <laughs> I'll just spend what, $30 over that? Get like 20 headsets. We'll just do like a headset giveaway. That'll get some clicks. Headset giveaway. Let's go. <laughs> just like garbage headsets. Just absolutely fucking terrible. That would actually, that would actually, that could be actually be a thing. That could actually be a thing. I could actually go and get a bulk pickup of a whole bunch of of uh uh of some item that is just like really shitty so shitty that it's actually like a little endearing it's like oh man it's great yeah mike b gives away these like super shitty uh uh you know bulk items that you order from china <laughs> and then he said give away it'd be great all right are these props for a porno oh it's, i mean like this headset might be is there some is there some like i mean it's a dollar one to four dollars What's the shipping cost? That is a great question. Uh, I mean, I wonder what it would be. Let's see. Uh, this guy's done. It's an Let me see. Let me, let me go ahead and actually click a couple buttons here. I might be able to get to this for you. You have to contact the uh, um, the buyer to get the actual price. But I'm going to see if I can actually plug in the. Oh man, mm, I'm just going to pick some places here, and then I'm going to put in a zip code. I'll put nine zero two one zero. Y'all know where that's at. Uh, let's just say, uh, how much do you think it would cost or how way for like a handful of headsets? Let's say like, uh, six pounds, seven pounds, let's say 10 pounds, 10 pounds, a good handful of things. Um, let me see, get quote. Let me see if it'll tell me. No. Oh, volume is required. Okay. 
Is he going to give it to me? <laughs> I fucked something up. I fucked something up. Uh, that can't be right. <laughs> that can't be right. There's no, that's, that's, I don't think that's correct uh, at all. So, unfortunately, I can't really give you guys an accurate uh, number on what exactly the, uh, the, the shipping cost would be. Uh, I just put down, I just put 10 kilogram. Oh, I thought it was pounds, but whatever. Um, from one port to another. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but, uh, I'm sure he probably has, he's working with somebody that can just basically drop ship these things. So firing off into space. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you see, my father has a business where he buys Chinese products. Uh, what happens? You pick a model and tell them how much you want it costs. And they tell you, um, if you want that price, we need to put that kind of plastic and that kind of metal to make, uh, to get that price. I watched a, um, there was a series, I had Billy Mays on it, uh, before he died. Uh, by the way, I was wrecked when Billy Mays died. It really was. Uh, but, uh, he had a show. I can't remember what the name of the show was. It was a reality show. It was only ran for one season because he died. Um, but it was a really, really interesting insight to how those TV, um, you know, commercial infomercials function and how they work. And they touch on that too, Ains. They talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how much it costs to, to actually pick up an item and, and mass produce it and everything. Um, it's a, if, if you could find it, I mean, actually see if I could find the, uh, it's probably not a hard Billy Mays reality show. Easy. Right. Uh, it was called Pitchman. If you, if Pitchman is available anywhere, I highly recommend watching at least like a couple episodes of it because it really is a great insight into the, basically how that industry works. And that industry thrives on getting a lot of shit made for super cheap. So that way they could sell it, uh, you know, they could get on these infomercials and they could sell it for, you know, turn the biggest profit possible, uh, possible. Now this exists in a lot of fields, but there's not a whole lot of behind the scenes, you know, reality shows that show how these things, uh, uh how these things function. Um, but yeah, so, so anyways, that, that concludes our, uh, our soldier boy you, weekly you, update. You. Yeah. So tune in next week. Hopefully we'll have some more because I have that sample you. now and I kind of want to make sure we get some use out of it before, you know, um, yes, yes. Uh, the opportunity has ceased operation. Listen, I'm about as beat up as everybody else about it, especially when it said my battery is getting low and it's getting dark. Yes. For some reason that hurts, <laughs> but you guys should know if it makes you feel any better. One day we will colonize Mars. And we will find him or her. And we will scoop up the opportunity. We're going to dust it off. And we're probably going to put it on a, uh, put it in a museum or something like that. Or maybe just fire that bitch back up and put it somewhere else. Fire it off to some other planet. Give him another go. So it all is not lost. Assuming, of course, we don't destroy ourselves or wall, us, or wall ourselves in before then. Then yes, all is not lost. So we could probably, hopefully, potentially, uh, you know, we'll see... We'll see the opportunity one more time uh, before, uh, well, we won't, not in our lifetime, I don't think, but so it's okay. It's just taking a nap. Opp opportunity is just taking a nap, son. Don't worry. It's just taking a nap. It's so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. I'm a little teary eyed. All right. Last thing. This is actually, uh, this is a little, uh, uh, this is a little off topic, I think. But Noxie's a friend, and I just got this in the mail, and I think it's awesome. So my friend Noxie, she's, uh, she's an artist. Uh, you guys know her work because if you've ever been to Wowhead or Lol King or any of those sites, she did all the art for that for a number of years. Um, she has a, um, a Patreon where she makes pins, and I just got my first pin. I don't collect pins, right? As a matter of fact, the pins that I have, I'm trying to sell. So if you're looking for a super ultra rare uh, Wowhead pin, one that you can't get anywhere else, like this one here, hit me up. <laughs> I got like three left. Uh, anyways, but for her, I will definitely check it out uh, and myself. And so this is, uh, it's it's actual like, like this is good material. I don't want to like scratch it or anything like that. But if you guys are, 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 are if you guys are interested in collecting pins or whatever, or you just want to support Noxie, she didn't put me up to this. I just, she's a good friend. And I got this, I got it in. I was just like, wow, this is like really good quality. Uh, but yeah, you can find her at patreon.com slash, um, uh, what is it? Pin Guild, P-I-N-G-U-I-L-D. Uh, and yeah, you also got a couple stickers with it too. So I love Noxie. I think she's the biggest sweetheart in the world and she's an incredible artist. Uh, and, um, 
and yeah, I just, you know, and this is like actual good quality work. So that's it. No, I don't think she's in chat, but you could go and check that out. And also she got these sick bags. What the fuck? <laughs> these are crazy. Like even a high quality bag that came or an envelope that came with it. I don't even want to throw this away. Jeez. All right. So that's it for the news. Hopefully not next week because next week I'm gone. But hopefully the week after that, we have, man, just like a regular, a regular, like chill ass week. You know, let's just talk about games that have come out. <laughs> I realize I can focus on that, right? But I feel like there's things we have to talk about sometimes. And so that's going to happen. Don't worry. We're, we're going to try to find a good balance between, you know, real drama <laughs> and not drama. We'll find a balance. We'll get there. So. Thank you again, Uncle Chat. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, being part of this show. Uh, I actually turned down, I turned down somebody wanting to do a, a, a show with me because I was like, well, I would, but I got Uncle Chat, so we're good. So thank you again, Uncle Chat. I love that we call you guys this. Um, tune in next time, two weeks from now, because I'm going to be gone next week. We're going to Disneyland. Woo! You can follow me, twitter.com slash aka Mike B, aka Mike B on pretty much everything. I did an interview with Lindsay Geektron, actually. That's going to be going up sometime within the next couple of weeks. So you guys can check that out. Uh, not on the uh, gaming YouTube. That's going to be on a different YouTube channel. Yes, I'm maintaining multiple YouTube channels, but it's, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm finding a balance. I'm getting there. So that's it. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you, Uncle Chat. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>